may not want to acknowledge the other baby. I'm going to tell you from the black side, no matter whether friend or foe, as soon as the baby show up, we love the baby. White people have no chill when it comes to a baby showing up that they never acknowledged. <laughs> and there it is. The truth from Cheryl Underwood as it relates to the Biden seventh grandchild. That opinion of Cheryl Underwood, a black woman who has considerable heft in the community, that opinion is why the Democrats are nervous about Joe Biden. That opinion is why the Biden family turned 180 degrees last Friday and accepted the seventh grandchild. Finally. It's amazing, isn't it? It's Michael Pelka in for Chris Plant on the Chris Plant Show. Welcome to Wednesday. Yes, we've been talking about yesterday's indictment of Donald Trump. Yes, we're talking about the impending indictment of Donald Trump, the fourth, number four. If we get to number five, do we bring out the old uh, Lou Monty song, Mambo number five, and go, indictment number five, one, two, three, four, five, indict Donald Trump because he's alive? Maybe that's the way we go. Just saying. But uh, I think the Democrats are smelling problems, real problems, with uh, their candidate. And that's why they're pressing harder and harder and harder on Joe Biden, trying to bring back the avuncular nature of Biden's image. Trying to let us know that uh, good old Uncle Joe is back, even though today is the best day he's going to have cognitively. His physical health may be okay. For an 80-year-old guy. He was out bike riding again. He's taking a bike ride every day while he's down in Lower Slower Delaware, but not answered any questions from the media. But his, his cognitive skills are at large and being questioned at every turn. So I think there's concern because the communities that that the Democrats rely on specific communities, the black community, the Hispanic community, uh, some, of the, some of the other fractions that they go after. Uh, they are, um, they're absolutely concerned that Joe Biden might have a problem. And you need only to look at the latest Gallup polling, the latest New York Times polling that shows Joe Biden is in trouble. When half of your base is begging for another candidate. Half of your base wants another person in that spot. You have to know it's not good. And we really even haven't gotten deep into some of the investigations that should be happening into Joe Biden, into his son, into his wife, into his brother, into anyone with the last name Biden to see where they got all that money. The DOJ isn't doing it. They are uh, they're abdicating their responsibility. So we shall see. I, I salute Cheryl Underwood for telling the truth. I salute her for saying, no, no, that, that baby is accepted in the community. I'm old enough to remember when Jesse Jackson ran for president in 1988, and there was a story that Jesse had impregnated a campaign worker. There was an allegation that a campaign worker had a child with Jesse Jackson. And we never heard anything more about that, except that that child was being raised by Jesse Jackson and his wife or their family. In the case of the Bidens, they didn't even want to see this child. And that really has hit Biden in the female community in those those Democrats who are in the center, those Democrats who consider themselves uh, Democrats, but not far left. And it just shows you that that social issues will have a huge impact going forward. I still believe it's going to be the parents who are going to determine the 2024 election. I still believe it's it's mom and dad dealing with their kids, dealing with what's being foisted upon their kids that are going to make the big decisions going forward. Now, we, we've talked at length about yesterday's indictment. We've talked at length about what's been said. 
about Jack Smith's latest indictment. And uh, by the way, we're calling Jack Smith Rasputin. And we might get another nomination. We have another name being nominated as well for Jack Smith. Right now he's Rasputin or Rasputin. Uh, we'll see. But uh, the the ultimate goal of the left has said to be to disqualify Donald Trump from running for office. And I'm old enough to remember about a year ago, a reporter asking Joe Biden what he would do about Donald Trump running for president again, because we can't have the orange man running for president. It's not going to be good. We can't have that happen. This exchange should give you a chill. That G7 conversation was tied to your predecessor, who is about to launch another campaign. So how do you reassure them if that is the reason for their questioning that the former president will not return, that his political movement, which is still very strong, uh, will not oh, yeah. once again take power in the United <laughs> States. Now, the question was about the G7, where Biden was saying there were people wondering if if he would uh, if he would actually he Donald Trump actually be running. And could that mean Joe Biden would be out and the G7 would have to deal with Donald Trump again? I, I'm of the opinion that a little fear is a good thing. If the rest of the world is respectful of you, but they fear you a little bit, I think that's a good thing. So when this reporter says, you know, um, Donald Trump looks like he could be he could be running again, Biden kind of laughs it off. He goes, oh, yeah, he's strong. He's politically strong. Listen to the snarkiness in Biden's laughter. But then listen to what he says after, because that's very telling. Return that his political movement, which is still very strong, uh, will not oh, yeah? once again take power in the United States. <laughs> well, um, we just have to demonstrate that he will not take power. Wait, what did the president of the United States just say about the previous president and possible competitor? In the 2024, we will have to demonstrate that he will not take power. Hmm. Huh. What does he mean? What does he mean by that? Uh, by uh, if we uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he, uh, under legitimate efforts of uh, our Constitution, does not become the next president again. We will uh, make sure under the legitimate efforts of the Constitution, make sure he does not become the president again. Anyone think like all of this, all these, all these indictments have been just sitting around waiting to be dropped as, as we played for you the timeline of the problems for the Democrats, Joe Biden and his, his corrupt family, and then suddenly there's an indictment and a whistleblower comes forward, there's suddenly an indictment. And the former business partner of Hunter Biden comes forward and confirms what we've known, that Joe Biden knew all the time what Hunter was up to. He knew the business partners. He talked about them. He talked with them. He had dinner with them. He played golf with them. Next day, there's an indictment. This seems to be very well planned, very well laid out. And it's only because the power structure does not want to lose its spot. They don't want to give up what they've got. And why would you? I mean, let's just look at the trappings of the presidency. It is remarkable. It is absolutely remarkable. And, and if you weather it, if you weather the, the, all these slings and arrows coming from the outside and you get through your term, uh, you're, you're secure for life. And you could travel the world and have protection and you can give speeches and rake in the money, unlike the Bidens who've been raking in the money, allegedly as much as $50 million, just because they could get Joe to say hello and smile. Does seem like it's been a plan for a while, doesn't it? Yep. Now, there was an interesting twist on all this yesterday. There was a, a judge in Pennsylvania, a Pennsylvania state judge, ruled that Donald Trump is protected by presidential immunity for statements he made creating doubt about the 2020 elections while he was in office. 
Uh, Philadelphia County Court of Common Pleas judge, a judge named Michael Erdos, ruled that the 2020 election worker, James Savage, who was trying to sue Trump over election claims, uh, was unable to do so, that Trump's immunity included coverage of a tweet and other comments he made from the White House while the Pennsylvania State Senate Committee met in November of 2020. So I wonder if there will be some push to see if that same immunity could transfer to the post-presidency with Donald Trump questioning the legitimacy of elections. I also wonder if we're now going to see a push to go back to each and every one of those states and relitigate the arguments about voter fraud, corruption, voter machines being jammed, etc., I know that uh, Carrie Lake is still waging a battle in Arizona. Don't know if it's going to be successful, but God bless her. She's still going after it because it seemed mighty suspicious what happened in Maricopa County on Election Day. But we'll watch Jack Smith or Rasputin or whatever his nickname, new nickname is. As a matter of fact, let's check in with uh, Ron in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Ron, welcome to the Chris Plant Show with me, Michael Pelka. You have a uh, potential nickname for Jack Smith? Is Ron with us? I... Ron, Hello. Ron is with you. Hello. Uh, well, I'm glad you're with us, Ron. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you speak I just in third you, person. <laughs> you, uh, you do a great job for filling in for Chris. Thank you, sir. Uh you know, let's think about the Unabomber, Ted Nowinski. Yeah, Unabomber. Ted, but, Ted but you Kaczynski. Think of that name and you think, yeah. <laughs> now, well, let's call let's call him the lawyer bomber, Mr. Jack Smith, because you know I, when you say his name, you just want to think of the, the Unabomber and how disgusting he was and how much people hated him. Well, I think that's where this guy's going to be. At. But now, the lawyer bomber. It, you, the lawyer bomber. You're calling him the lawyer bomber. I, I have to give credit yeah. to. Uh, Greg Gutfeld, who I think is a genius. Greg Gutfeld said, what we're witnessing, he said this yesterday, what we're witnessing is not warfare, it's lawfare. And he, he correctly identified, I had to look at my notes because I always keep a notebook with me while I'm driving around or watching TV and I have to take notes. Uh, he called it lawfare. What's going on is the lawyers actually in a legal war that will determine the control of our country. So, um, yeah. What, what was your your nickname again for? Uh, my nickname was the the lawyer bomber. The lawyer bomber. But, He's the lawyer because, bomber. He's coming yeah, in because, dropping legal bombs. Yeah. Well, if you look at if you look at uh, Ted and you look at uh, Jack, there's a, quite a bit of similarity. If you put his head on one or the other, you would say, "Oh, they look alike." In my opinion, I, I wonder if we photoshopped. Um, uh, the lawyer bomber in a hoodie with some some sunglasses. He he might look like the Unabomber. That's it. Yeah, exactly. I'll put it on the consideration oh. list. Uh, it, it's a good one. Well, it's a good one. I'm still uh, kind of stuck on the uh, the young lady. I think her name and maybe uh, maybe Jane will remind me correctly. I think her name was Emily. Uh, please let's clarify so we give the correct attribution. Who came up with Rasputin? And so I'm, I'm still Rasputin, leaning towards Rasputin. Guy, Sorry? Well, Ras- I don't think Rasputin was a super bad guy, was he? I, 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 I recall him just being some sort of religious figure, but I might be wrong. I was a swindler. He was a, uh, a charismatic oh, was a religious now? swindler. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, there's That's not it. a lot of a love given to Rasputin's. Anyone who gets the name Rasputin doesn't exactly go, oh, great, thanks for that. I, <laughs> I've always wanted to be called that. Yeah. All right. We'll, well see. I, just, I, just a thought, but I think that, you know, I think he looks more like uh, uh, Ted than he does uh, Rasputin. Than Raspy, the old Raspy one. <laughs> well, the old I, Raspy. <laughs> I, I appreciate you being there, Ron. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to take a call, but I'm out of time. I'm Mike in Gainesville. Hang on. Hang on. I got to I gotta hear from you. Oh, it was Patty. Patty who came up with that uh, Rasputin moniker. Thank you, Jane, so much. Jane's on the phone and also keeping one ear on me. 
It's Mike Opelka in for Chris Plant on The Chris Plant Show. You're listening to The Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. Chris Plant Show on a fabulous Wednesday in America. Mike Opelka in for my friend Chris Plant. I know someone's going, well, how could you say it's fabulous? Donald Trump was indicted for the third time. You got to remember, these indictments have made him stronger. Every time it makes him stronger. It seems like it's futile for them to continue to do it, but they're piling him up one after another. The Democrats keep pushing him out there. So uh, I I think in the end, they will regret it. And I mentioned Greg Gutfeld just a little bit ago. uh, Last night on The the Five, which is a terrific program, uh, Gutfeld had uh, this take on Donald Trump and these indictments, and he tied it to uh, Popeye. If Trump or Popeye indictments and impeachments, they're the spinach. Mm -hmm. That's right. The more indictments, the bigger his muscles get. (laughs) Well done, Gregory. Um, there is a bipartisanship happening, and maybe it's something we need to discuss in the next half hour. It, it looks like uh, Nancy Mace and Jamie Raskin are both sponsoring a change in the rules that if you are a recreational marijuana user, you will be allowed to hold a federal job because that's not the case right now. I wonder if this signals there's going to be more action on legalizing recreational pot around the country. There are 20 plus, I think we're at 26 states where it's legal. I'm not a fan. I'm never going to be a fan because it's just too easy for too many stone people to be on the roads. Just, just crazy. Uh, All right. I I mentioned that Mike in Gainesville had been holding for a while. So let's get him in here. Mike, uh, you have a thought on all of these indictments and whether or not it'll block Donald Trump from, being on the ballot? Yes, good morning, Michael. Happy hump day. Thank you, sir. Back at you. Uh, I was just tr- trying to make the point that uh, to be ineligible to be the president uh, under the 14th Amendment, you have to be convicted of insurrection or rebellion. So he can't really be kept uh, from being president in that manner using the 14th Amendment unless he's convicted of those two things. And Jack Smith has not charged him with either of those two things. And if they try to keep him off the ballot, I'm sure 80 million of us can simply write Trump on our ballot. Ah, wouldn't it be amazing that Donald Trump was elected once in 2016 in a regular vote and then possibly in 2024 by a massive write-in vote? It kind of flows with the Trump storyline, doesn't it? Overcoming odds. We'll see. We'll follow it. More indictments to come. And more Chris Plant Show to come with me, Mike Opelka, on The Chris Plant Show. This is The Chris Plant Show. It's the Chris Plant Show on a Wednesday. Michael Pelka in for my friend Chris Plant. Going to try and get to everything I have on my schedule. I mentioned earlier today, I, I really think we're making progress, and I mean serious progress, against the left and the crazy woke agenda. All of the stuff that has uh, infected our culture. I, I think we're making serious progress. And Jason Aldean and his song, Try That in a Small Town, 
is is maybe the pivot point where things changed. That song hit number one. Now the, the top of the charts is dominated by country music, which I happen to be a huge fan of country music. So that makes me happy. And I'm starting to see some of the uh, some of the strength coming out of the movement where people are voting with their feet and their wallets and Bud Light obviously paying a very high price. But, you know, the other side of that is that company is so large, so very large. The company that owns Anheuser-Busch, which owns Bud Light or which makes Bud Light, uh, InBev is the company. It's not an American company. It's a foreign company. And another one of their beers, Modelo, a fine beer, is now the best-selling beer in the country. Has supplanted Bud Light, rightly so. So uh, we are making progress. And with the success of movies like The Sound of Freedom, that uh, oddly and perfectly enough, Disney had the rights to make The Sound of Freedom, and they weren't making it. So this teeny tiny Angel Studios out of Utah took the chance and they're being rewarded for the courage of their convictions. And it just makes me feel good. That that normalcy, and I know uh, Remember Normal is in the Chris Plant store. Uh, all kinds of great swag in the Chris Plant store. But uh, normalcy is starting to take uh, its place again in the middle. We can still have people on the fringes. We can still have people on the left and the right who do crazy stuff. But we're starting to see appropriate action now and support for good causes. So that that does make me happy. And I continue to encourage people to do this. I continue to encourage people to you got to keep keep supporting with your wallet and your feet. You know, maybe maybe you made a move away from so many products coming out of China. But there are other products out there that a lot of us think are American products that they, they really aren't. American companies. I was looking over a list of American companies that are no longer American. Uh, for example, the simple, delicious summertime treat, the Popsicle. The Popsicle was an American invention. An 11-year-old kid invented the Popsicle a bazillion years ago. They sold the rights to another company in America that subsequently sold them to Unilever, a gigantic food conglomerate not based here in America. So when you enjoy a Popsicle, you're not enjoying an American product anymore. Ben and Jerry's used to be an American company, but they're communists too. Uh, ben and Jerry's, not, not fans of our constitution and capitalism. They sold their company to Unilever. Burger King, no longer an American company. Can you believe it? If you're a fan of a, a flame-broiled burger, and who isn't? Burger King, once a Florida company, is now Canadian-owned. Isn't this amazing when you look at all this stuff? Trader Joe's. This one took me by surprise. And it took me by surprise, and I wouldn't even have considered it but for the recalls from Trader Joe's in the past couple of weeks. There were cookies that some of the cookies, almond cookies, had rocks in them. That's never a good thing to have in your cookies. And then there was a, another product that had bugs in it. Even though the left wants us to eat bugs, uh, you should know that you're buying bugs when you're buying bugs. But Trader Joe's, no longer an American company. Trader Joe's is now owned by Aldi. So that's a German company that now has uh, a, a spot here in America. 7-Eleven. Couldn't be a more American company if you thought about it, right? 7-Eleven, based out of Dallas. Well, now 7-Eleven, owned by Japan. A Japanese company. The Sunglass Hut. You go into a mall, you see the kiosks everywhere, sunglasses everywhere. Sunglass Hut, owned by an Italian company. Holiday Inn, formerly a Tennessee-based company. Originated out of Tennessee. The nation's innkeeper, Holiday Inn, is no longer an American company. It's now a UK company. What are the great American companies? I think we need a list of all this. Smithfield Farms, you know, Smithfield Farms, pork out of Virginia initially, now owned by a Hong Kong entity. 
And, and this one really surprised me. You know the Ironman triathletes? Now, I'm not someone who participates in the Ironman triathletes or triathlons, but I know the people who do. I have a, a sister-in-law who's a regular participant in these. And uh, those are not American events anymore. China bought. China purchased the Iron Man. And there are more and more and more that I could go over, but the list is endless. It seems like we're losing track of American companies. And as I'm constantly pushing people to vote with your wallet and vote, uh, vote for America and vote for American prosperity, I, I tend to try and shop locally in small stores when I can. You can't always do that. But it really helps your community. And uh, if you're buying American-made products, you're doing a great thing for the country. All right, that's my little speech about that. I, I see there's just a whole bunch of calls coming in. Uh, one of them coming from Wyoming, and I, I want to speak to Michelle in Wyoming as I see the topic here, uh, because um, not only does it relate to voting in this country, uh, it also ties into something I think happened in Illinois a couple days ago that we have to get to. Hello, Michelle. Welcome to the Chris Plant Show. Hello, Michael. We share our first name. You know what it means in Hebrew? I don't, Michael, but I'd love to learn. Uh, tell me, please. It's, it's uh, who is like God. Um, to honor oh, God. wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, when uh, Biden got into office, the first thing I told my husband was watch for new schemes to keep him in power. Uh, I keep hearing the Republicans going, well, we got to make sure everybody has an ID to vote. OK, so they'll issue uh, driver's licenses a few days before or a week before vote uh, 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 to all the illegals. You're dealing with people who are moved and motivated by the demonic realm. This is no small matter. Uh, in my old country, in Romania, uh, even for the people who went to work in England and other places, the diaspora, as they called it, they kept them in line for days, only one at a time being let in to vote. Meanwhile, they're busing their people whom they pay to all the voting centers to overwhelm everybody else. Then they formed, I don't know how many little parties, and then they start with the propaganda. Don't bother to go to vote. They're all corrupt to discourage the people. They are operating with the devil's cunning. And it bothers me when I hear, oh, the Republicans are so weak-spined. No, they're not. They're self-interested because they, too, are swamp creatures, a lot of them, and they are beneficiaries of the system. Oh, Biden and his family. No, not just him. He's the tip of the iceberg. They are all beneficiaries in their overwhelming majority of the swamp, and they don't want discovery because discovery might lead to consequences, and they would take the whole country down if they were to lose their freedom and their money, their power. So uh, my other point was it pains me to the heart to say the reason we are here is that too many people took the freedoms and all the blessings that the forefathers sacrificed to get, they took them for granted. The notion was, I went to vote, now I wash my hands. I don't care to check what my kid is being taught in school. I don't care to do what foot and ankle games uh, the politicians are doing. We can see our football and our barbecues. And then you wake up decades later and your country is being taken over by the communists. Your population has been secularized. And the point is, how can you fight? Like the Bible says, the demonic activity will increase. Okay, you're dealing with spiritual evil, which drives these people relentlessly. How are you going to fight it in the secular realm? That's what we're setting ourselves up for. Michelle, um, anyway. you you came here from Romania. You made the choice to come here to America. Uh, how old were you when you left Romania? Oh, I just finished high school. Okay, so you were 
you were smart enough to know what the heck was going on and where you were, where what you yes. were leaving and where you were coming to, right? Yes. And, you know, I walked in plastic shoes and I have graduate degrees, technical degrees, and I paid every penny of my student loans. God bless and you. And my dad held two jobs. <laughs> we were poor, but we had a vision. And we had the heart and the conscience to know you have to sacrifice for something worthwhile. Never sat under a tree for the pear to fall in our mouth, says a saying <laughs> is in the old country. You know. Yeah, you got to climb the tree and pick the pear if you really want to make right. sure you're you're eating today. What um, yeah. what a great testimony! What a powerful story! And uh, I, I really think this is what more Americans need to hear is from people who came here because this was, as Ronald Reagan said, the last shining city on the hill, the great shining city on the hill. And if we lose it here, we lose it around the world. So I, I um, thank you for sharing your, uh, your testimony and the fact that we both share the same first name, Michelle. God bless you. I appreciate you so much. And you, and I always enjoy talking to you. We talked before. God bless. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I thought you sounded familiar. It's hard to forget that, that fabulous Romanian accent. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, I, I need to get to Wyoming. I've not been to that state. That's one of six states I have not visited, and I need to get here. Uh, we talk about history a lot. I do. I, I monitor what's going on in history. Uh, Matt in Arlington, Virginia, wants to make sure we understand uh, today, as it relates to history, Matt, welcome to the program, sir. Well, uh, good morning. This is the hundredth anniversary of the passing of President Warren Harding, and he's he's forgotten and he's a bit ridiculed by by the historians. And one thing I thought was interesting is you used a phrase just a, a couple of minutes ago, normalcy. Yeah, that was his one of his taglines during the nineteen twenty. Uh, election. And he was ridiculed for it because they thought it was uh, an improper use of the word, uh, or grammatically. And he had been a newspaper editor, and he, he, uh, he, he knew the proper use of the word, but he was still ridiculed for it. And on this date, uh, President Warren G. Harding passed away, and Vice President Calvin Coolidge became the president, if I remember. That is correct. And uh, the, the, the amazing thing is having died under under terrible scandal with the teapot dome, among yeah. other things. And you, you go back in history, and it's very interesting to see these 50-year um, uh, cycles of scandal that 50 years ago uh, in 1973 was you know, the real breaking of, of Watergate, and then 50 years was uh, teapot, 50 years before that was uh, the U.S. Grant. Wow. I wonder if uh, we need to keep a 50-year clock to look for a 50-year scandal timeline to see. That's a, that's a great little bit of uh, history, a great little nugget there, Matt. I appreciate it. And thank you for reminding us of President Harding's passing 100 years ago today. Uh, there have only been 46 presidents. Uh, here we are at uh, another crossroads of 50 years from the Watergate scandal. Interesting how that all unfolds. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, I've got time for one more quick one here. Let's go all the way up to Canada. Let's go all the way up to Ottawa, where uh, Rick is listening to the Chris Plant Show. Rick, you wanted to weigh in on this. What What do the Canadians think of everything that's going on here with our president? <laughs> yeah, sorry, 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 and true Canadian fashion for whatever we need to be sorry for. Um, thanks for filling in to, for the big shoes or the big uh, the big loafers or the big Crocs of Chris Plant. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, I want to talk about the weather because the weather here in Ottawa is nice and pleasant on this sunny August day. And what, wait a minute, weather, Rick, Rick, you're not allowed to talk to me about. Wait, you can't talk to me about the weather unless I'm sure you're calling from a burner phone. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I really want to talk about the weather. That's that's the important thing. The weather is the important thing. And you know, <laughs> and the fact that I may want to bribe you or. Or 
<laughs> well, listen, well, if, you're gonna, is, is if you're going to if you're going to you know? if you're going to wire <laughs> transfer <laughs> money to me, I I don't want those crazy Canadian dollars. I don't want any of those loonies coming across the wire. I oh, want yeah, good yeah, old yeah, American yeah. dollars. <laughs> Canadian tire money, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to make that point. Yeah, yeah. We want to talk about the weather, and that's the important issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all uh, the, the Canadian smoke, Canadian smoke that we're sending your way. <laughs> yeah, have you stopped that? Are the wildfires out? Can we finally get a break from all the Canadian smoke you've been sending our way? <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll deal with that. Our, our illustrious prime minister will uh, will deal with that in his own his own fashion. I'm I'm sure. And is he related to Fidel Castro? That's the question most of us uh, want to know. There is definitely there is definitely a a, a resemblance. Uh, we we'll leave that as a moot point. <laughs> are you allowed to bring that up? Are you in, are you allowed uh, to bring that up in oh, yeah. pleasant society? People bring that up all the time, as well as his name, Justin. Some people call him Justine. Uh, <laughs> well, that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, Rick, thank you. I I gotta take a break, but I I had to go up to. Uh, Ottawa to find out what the heck was going on. We appreciate you listening. It's Michael Pelka. I'm in for Chris Blant this week. I'm very fortunate to be here. We'll try and get to a final statements here just around the corner on the Chris Blant Show. There's only one Chris Plant. The Chris Plant Show. It is the Chris Plant Show. Michael Pelka wrapping up day three. I'll be back tomorrow, God willing, and we'll take care of business with all the big news of the day. So many people participated today and so many reached out via social media saying, hey, we need to have the call from the beautiful Romanian woman, Michelle, and it will be on the podcast. So give it a couple hours. The Chris Plant podcast will be up. And you can play that call. It, it was powerful and touching and important to share. So thank you, all of you, for noticing that. And thank you, Michelle, for reaching out. We just got off the phone, too, with a uh, Canadian gentleman, one of our neighbors to the north, as uh, I like to call it, America's favorite suburb, Canada. And uh, I just saw this story that's kind of vexing. It's on the life site the LifeSite news uh, site, that an Ontario, Canada woman has been asked to donate her husband's organs, which that's not unusual. Hospitals will do that when someone dies. Uh, the unusual part of it is um, he should be alive because he, he should have been given a kidney transplant, but he wasn't vaccinated. So the Canadian Health Service denied him the transplant. And now they want the rest of the organs. Hmm. Interesting. No. And one more re request. I, I don't have time to take the call. Uh, let's try it real quick. Frank. Oh, no, we don't. Frank in Charlotte, North Carolina asked, how could Biden get 81 million votes? Well, you need to get the song from the Truth Bombers featuring Carrie Lake. The title 81 million votes my ass. I'll be back tomorrow, and you should be too. Till next time, testudo, my friends. Testudo. Testudo. <laughs>